Welcome to my third episode. Today's video is going to be about Elizabeth of York. Uh, this is the makeup I did during this video. All the makeup I've used is listed down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. Hello. So we begin today, we're talking about Elizabeth of York or Elizabeth Plantagenet. She was born February 11th of 1466 at the Palace of Westminster in London to King Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville. She was the oldest of 10 children between Edward and Elizabeth. So her mother was pregnant dur during her own coronation, during Elizabeth Woodville's, uh, her own coronation at Westminster Abbey. And that was where also little Elizabeth's christening was, which um, being the first child of a king, her christening was a very, very grand affair. It was sponsored by both her grandmothers, Jaquetta Woodville of Luxembourg and Cecily Neville. So I didn't have my stuff out, so I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and Cecily Neville, Duchess of York. Her third sponsor was her cousin, Richard Neville of Warwick. Yes, here we go again with this bastard. She was betrothed at three years old to George Neville, Duke of Bedford, who was the nephew of Warwick. This betrothal was short-lived because George's father supported a rebellion against the king, her father. When she was four years old, her father was deposed by Warwick and he escaped in exile to Flanders along with his brother, uh, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. If you watch the first episode, this is gonna seem a little bit familiar. Uh, and many of his men. Her mother, Elizabeth, the queen, was currently pregnant with their fourth child and needed sanctuary because uh, if you remember from the first episode that I did, uh, now King Henry is, Henry the sixth is king again. Work is on a war path for Elizabeth. Um, it's a, it's a little bit in shambles at this point. Um, so Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth ran to Westminster Abbey in, for sanctuary with the three girls. So it was Elizabeth and her two younger sisters at that point. It was there that Elizabeth gave, Queen Elizabeth gave birth to her and Edward's first son. Edward was the baby's name. Uh, and they stayed in that abbey for five total months. It's assumed she began her formal education in within the palace starting when she was about five or six and she would have learned history and alchemy both her and her sisters would have been also taught by ladies in waiting and their mother uh, both the skills and accomplishment considered for future queens some skills would be reading and writing in english math and household management needlework horsemanship, music, and dancing. On August 29th of 1475, at the age of nine, her father signed the Treaty of Pekini. In that treaty, Elizabeth was then betrothed to Louis XI's firstborn son, Charles, the Dauphin of France. Louis backed out of this in 1482, and nothing ever came of it. In 1477, she, along with her mother, Elizabeth Woodville, and her paternal aunt, Elizabeth of York, just Duchess of Suffolk, Suffolk, Duchess of Suffolk, was named Lady of the Garter. This title was given to members of the royal family or closely associated with the order by marriage or kinship. So they were issued robes and hoods for the annual Feast of St. George. This was also held at Windsor Castle, which was the spiritual home of the order. 
In April of 1483, King Edward died suddenly. Uh, Elizabeth at that time was 17 years old. Her younger brother, Edward, was now king. And her uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, was the Lord Protector slash Regent. So what that means is he basically was ruling through Edward V now. So the now King Edward V was on his way back to London from Ludlow in Wales, where he was living as the Prince of Wales. He was being escorted by his uncle, Anthony Woodville, and his half-brother, Richard Gray, when they were intercepted by Richard and his men, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, not Richard Gray. This is, see, like I said before, there's so many of the same names, it gets really confusing. So, recap. <laughs> I feel like we need a recap. Richard Gray and Anthony Woodville are escorting Edward V from Ludlow in Wales back to London because now he was going to take the crown now that his father was gone. Well, Richard had other plans. Gloucester had other plans and he sent both Anthony and Richard Gray to Pontefract Castle under arrest. Now, so at that point, Edward V was placed at the Tower of London uh, in the royal residence. And it was also then that the Dowager Queen Elizabeth knew something was going on and she felt like her and the remaining children were under threat so remember I th at this point she had there were 10 children total i think she had with her probably seven seven of them two had died before this happened and then edward was obviously on his way back so uh, under, she went into sanctuary again at Westminster Abbey. Richard had requested the Archbishop Boucher, Boucher, Borsche, Borsche, uh, to get Richard, Richard Plantagenet, one of her sons, from her and bring him to the tower with just be with his brother and uh, keep him, basically keep him company as Edward V now awaited his coronation. <clears throat> so under force, pressure, or intimidation, Elizabeth agrees to send little Richard to the tower. It's here where history gets murky. Um, some stories eventually came out that Elizabeth may have swapped out Richard for a common boy and helped Richard escape. Um, obviously, we don't know if that's true. And uh, so after two months of Edward V being in the tower, Gloucester declares Edward's, Edward IV's marriage to Elizabeth Woodville invalid. So remember two videos ago, like two videos back, my first one, we talked about the rumors of Edward IV marrying a woman just to sleep with her. We, I kind of touched upon that. This is where that really comes back to bite Edward's heir in the ass. Uh, it is now being declared that Edward had already been married to Lady Eleanor Butler. Parliament supported this by issuing a bill, Titulus Regius, which is Latin for royal title. I may have butchered that, and I'm, I'm not very fluent in, um, in Latin. It was not my language I took. So this basically bastardized the children of Edward IV, uh, therefore declaring Edward V ineligible to be king. This made Richard the rightful king because there was no other surviving Plantagenet after 
after he died. This to me is utter bullshit, but that's my opinion. I think this whole, it was all power moves at that point. Elizabeth's uncle, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth's brother, Anthony, and her, and Elizabeth's half-brother, Richard Gray, were executed on June 25th by order of Gloucester. Uh, Gloucester attained the throne and became Richard III on July 6th of 1483. Um, I did say in the first video, again, I'm going to do, I, I, Richard needs his own, his own episode is so much crap that goes on even like as far as like a few years ago stuff was still like resurfacing from him gloucester attained the throne on july 6th of 1483 1483 becoming richard the third edward the fifth and richard plantagenet edward the fifth's brother and Elizabeth's brother, Elizabeth of York's brother, di disappeared shortly after Richard became king. So the rumor mill began to spin, uh, and then with the word that the boys had been murdered, these rumors seem to have been extremely credited. I'm not gonna go much more into that, that again deserves its own episode. There's a lot going on uh, still to this day with that, um, so I won't get more much more into that. But I'm gonna pause and put my um, eyeliner on. So it was at this point that Elizabeth Woodville made Queen Elizabeth Dowager Queen Elizabeth Woodville made an alliance with Lady Margaret Beaufort. Not a fan. Uh, this comes from a Tudor source much later on, Polydora Virgil. Margaret was the mother of Henry Tudor. Uh, again, uh, did we go over that? We did go over that. Okay. So, no, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. Spoiler alert. Um, Margaret was the mother of Henry Tudor. Henry claimed that he was the closest claimant to the throne for the Lancastrians. Uh, I I know, here we go again. War of the Roses all over again. He Henry was a descendant from Edward III, and he did have a weak claim, but there's more to this, and, and I'll cover that in another episode. But for now, whatever Henry's claims are, uh, according to Virgil, Margaret and Elizabeth Woodville were under an agreement that he should make more of a claim to the throne. And once he succeeded, I'm just blend, I'm just blending this out a little bit. I know I don't really talk about my makeup that much, but I'm just kind of pressing this in. It's been a hot minute, like years since I've used this. So um, because he was telling basically, he sh they were saying he should make more uh, of a claim on the throne. And once he succeeded, that he should marry Elizabeth of York to solidify his claim. Uh, she did have, back then she wouldn't have had a claim to the throne because she was a woman, but she had a, I mean, it was, she had royal blood in her. So I'm gonna skip off real quick and do my eyeliner and then I'll be right back. So in December of 1483, Henry swore an oath at the Cathedral of Rene. I'm going to say Rene, R-E-N-N-E-S. Again, uh, French was not my my language. Um, to marry Elizabeth, and they started planning his invasion all while being exiled in Brittany. I'm just going to wing out my, or I'm not wing out, but I'm just going to pull out my shadow a little bit more this way, um, so I'm not so down, but like pulled out a little bit. So in 1484, Elizabeth and her sisters left the Abbey and returned to court under their uncle, Richard. Uh, it's rumored that Richard had intended to marry our little Elizabeth because his wife, Anne Neville, remember her, uh, Kingmaker's daughter, had no surviving children and was dying. Because 
Richard now needed another heir to solidify his claim to the throne. Shortly after Anne's death, Richard sent Elizabeth away to a castle in York and started negotiations with King John II of Portugal for to marry his sister Joan, Princess of Portugal. Within the negotiations, he would have Elizabeth marry their cousin and future King of Portugal, Manuel. So Henry Tudor landed his army in Wales in August of 1485, and they made their way inland. Henry Tudor and Richard met on August 22nd uh, in the Battle of Bosworth, uh, in, in a battle at Bosworth Field. Richard's army surpassed Henry's, but he was betrayed by, Richard was betrayed by William Stanley. Richard died in battle and Henry took the crown uh, by right of conquest and was now Henry the seventh and was now Henry the seventh. I'd love to go more into uh, Richard's death and corpse here, but I'm going to save it again for another, for his own episode. Before, I'm just going to pull this back because I'm doing my foundation now. Uh, before their marriage could take place, uh, Henry had the, Henry the Seventh now, had the act of Titulus Regius repealed, legitimizing Elizabeth and her siblings once again. Both Henry and Elizabeth were descended from John of Gaunt, and they needed papal dispensation uh, due to canon law. So two applications were, that didn't work out for me, did it? Two applications were sent out, one to the Pope in Rome, one to the Pope in Rome, and then the other to the Papal Legate for England and I'm going to say Legate or it might be Legate, I don't know, but the, um, I would think it would be like the person that stands in for the Pope, like a Pope by proxy, maybe, um, for England and Scotland. The local one returned first, uh, and they didn't, they wanted that so that, they wanted that in hand so that because Henry didn't want people to view Elizabeth as unlawful or sinful. So the Cardinal Bishop of Canterbury married Henry and Elizabeth on January 18th of 1486. Elizabeth gave birth to their first son, uh, Arthur, on September 20th of 1486. And she was crowned queen on November 5th uh, I'm sorry, November 25th of 1487. And she had a very grand coronation and she, she was carried down the Thames on a royal barge. This marriage would start the insignia of the Tudor Rose, which is a white York Rose uh, layered on top of a red Lancastrian Rose. Even though this, even though their marriage was a political arrangement, it is shown that through their, like over the years in their marriage, they grew to fall in love with each other. It was faithful and the two respected each other greatly. This we'll talk about a little bit as we go. Since at, at Henry had not seen in England since he was a child, he really relied on Elizabeth to and his mother to mold the court's appearance. He again didn't, he really wasn't raised in court, so he wouldn't know any of this stuff. So, since uh, Elizabeth was raised in her father's court, she knew how to do this very well uh, and to solidify the union and to end any fighting between the houses of York and Lancaster. Elizabeth's sisters, Cecily and Anne of York, 
as well as their cousin, Margaret Plantagenet, who was the daughter of George, Duke of Clarence and uh, Isabel Neville. Uh, the, all three girls were married to Lancastrian men who were loyal to Henry. Richard III had previously tried to do something similar by marrying Cecily to Richard Scrope, but the marriage was annulled in 1486. Elizabeth and Henry had seven children total, but only four survived past the age of 10. So first was Arthur. He was born on September 20th of 1486. Margaret was next. She was born on November 28th of 1489. And then little Henry was born on June 18th, 1491. Then came Elizabeth, born July 2nd of 1492. She only lived to be a little over three. Then came Mary. She was born on March 18th of 1496. Edmund was born on February 21st of 1499. He only lived to be 18 months old. And finally, Catherine was born on February 2nd of 1503. Elizabeth was a very pious woman, uh, meaning she was religious and records show that she fre frequently had given money and aims, sometimes giving away money and aims, sometimes leaving her in debt. She was also, she also gave generously to monks and religious orders. In recent times, it's shown that, Hen that Henry was the same with her, their children and his mother. So she is also known, she was also known or is known as a great beauty, much like her mother. While still having traits from her father, such a, one of them was the height. Edward was a very tall guy for back then. And the ki most of the kids were pretty tall as well. The rest of the Tudor monarchs got her copper gold hair, which the d dynasty is ha has become known for. Uh, like Queen Elizabeth the first was her granddaughter and she had red hair. Also Mary Queen of Scots, same thing. Records have shown that Elsinge Palace was one of the nurseries for Elizabeth's and Henry's children. So she spent a lot of her time there if she wasn't at court. Thomas Lovell, who was a friend of Henry's, expanded and renovated part of Elsinge to accommodate the new and expanding family. It was finished in time for the birth of Prince Henry. This was just north of London in what is now Forty Hill uh, in Enfield. This palace with its new reno had plenty of room for the royal babies to play. It is also known, it is known now that Elizabeth helped in designing Greenwich Palace and it was a great place to host big scale entertaining. Records show that Christmas is, that Christmas was a loud and special time for the family and the court was happening at Christmas. Like they went all out. They had imported wine. They had spent a ton of money on roasted meats and entertainers. Elizabeth and the kids received many, many gifts from Henry, spending a lot of expensive cloth, spending a lot of money on expensive cloth for them. She didn't have a lot of political influence because of her mother-in-law, Lady Margaret Beaufort but she was claimed to have been gentle and kind and generous to her relations, servers and or servants and benefactors. So this, there is a report that Henry, that Henry chose to appoint Elizabeth's choice for bishopric instead of his mother's choice 
she also loved books and music and dancing and gambling. She had greyhounds as pets. She was also responsible for making arrangements for her children's education. In 1500, Henry and Elizabeth made a visit to Calais to meet with Philip I of Castile. And after she kept in contact with Isabella of Castile, Queen Isabella of Castile before their children's marriage. On November 14th of 1501, Elizabeth's oldest son, Arthur, married Catherine of Aragon. She was the daughter of King Ferdinand and Isabella I of Castile. After they were married, they were sent to live at Ludlow Castle. And this was the traditional home for the Prince of Wales. Five months after they got married, they both came down with the sweating sickness. And Arthur didn't survive this, but Catherine did. And he passed away on April 2nd of 1502. This devastated both Henry and Elizabeth. It's been reported that she held it together for him. And not in these words, but um, she held it together for Henry, but in front of him, but behind closed doors, she would fall apart when she was alone uh, only being consoled by her ladies in waiting. So Elizabeth became pregnant again. Uh, it's assumed they tried to have another male heir for the throne. In the event, Prince Henry became fatally ill like his brother. He wanted, she want, went to the tower for her confinement in, on, and on February 2nd, she gave birth to little Catherine Catherine passed shortly, passed away shortly after her birth and Elizabeth. Listen, with this Mac, I don't know if anybody uses this, but if you do, you really have to clean the brush off. So much product comes out with this eyebrow, their eyebrow fiber. So Catherine passed away on February, shortly after her birth. And then Elizabeth uh, came down with childbed fever. Elizabeth died on her 37th birthday, February 11th of 1503. This was a devastating loss for the family. From accounts, this left King Henry heartbroken, beyond heartbroken, to the point where that he basically shut himself off away when he became deathly ill and would only allow his mother to see him. It's also reported that Prince Henry was a bit of a mama's boy and her death absolutely gutted him. I, I do have theories on why he was the way he was and I think this life event would impact him, in my opinion, uh, would impact him for the rest of his life. I'm just gonna jump off real quick and do my, uh, what's it called? Eyelashes. So after her death, the Tower of London was abandoned as a royal residence. Royal births would then take place, would now take place in other palaces, and she was buried buried at Westminster Abbey. After his death, Henry was buried alongside her under their effigies. However, they're not alone in there. James the sixth and first, there which would be their great great grandson was buried in there with them. Uh, she is the only woman buried in Westminster Abbey that was the daughter, sister, niece, wife, and mother of English kings. Uh, so when I went to Westminster Abbey this past summer, uh, I got emotional standing there looking at their tomb, mainly because I, I knew that she had been in sanctuary in that abbey twice in her life, uh, and both for a pretty significant amount of time. Uh, and now she sits there in that same abbey for eternity. It just struck me emotionally, big time. Just, you know, this place that she had to be with her mother to stay alive, basically. 
Uh, it is a beautiful tomb. Uh, they are sat in the middle of the abbey towards the back. Um, so if you're looking at Westminster from the top, they're like towards the if you, uh, cross, if you will. So this way, they're kind of up in this area. It's there. It's just them sit there in there and they're alone in that area caged by wrought iron. So I'm going to go put lipstick on and I'm going to do my hair. I will be right back. So it's my completed look today. Um, I just, just wanted to do a little bit of a fun fact like I did with the first episode. Um, so Elizabeth, when you play with a deck of cards, uh, it is the queen is uh, a picture of Elizabeth of York. Also, the Tudor Rose is still the floral emblem for England. So I thought that was really cool um, that they still use that rose. My bangs are not behaving today, so that's, that's just how it's going to be today. Um, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, per usual, my uh, all the makeup I used is listed down below. If you liked this episode or you like this, please, please subscribe uh, and give the video a thumbs up. Uh, that's it. I hope uh, any everybody in the States have a, has a good Thanksgiving uh, and happy Black Friday shopping. And that's it. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.